Coco's 2D Sample Project Memory Game Part 2. We have seen how to add background image and menus to the scene in the previous chapter. We have also seen how to implement scene transitions. Let's open the Memory Game Project file by double-clicking the Memory Game Xcode Proj file. Open the Play Game scene. We can see the background and the home menu we have added in the previous chapter. Let's run the application to see the current status of the project. We can see that the application runs with a play menu and a background image. On clicking the play menu, another scene is loaded with a background image and a home menu. Pressing the home menu will load the main menu scene with play menu. Let's move forward and make modifications to this project. Now before we proceed further, let's see how we are going to implement the memory game. In our memory game, we will be using a pair of six images and will arrange it in random order. After arranging, we will mask those images with a single image. When the user touches a mask image, then the image that is hidden beneath it will be displayed. Then the user will have to touch another mask image. If the image that is in that position is the same as that of the one that is currently open or previously displayed, then both the images will disappear and the user will get points. If the second image is different than one selected previously, then both the images will be made hidden again beneath the mask image. The game will be over when finally there is no image in the screen. Now let's add the images needed for our memory game to the project. For this, right-click the Project Navigator panel and select the Add Files to Project option. We will be using animal images for our memory game. So let's add this animals folder with the animal images to the project. We can see the folder added in the project. Now let's add the frame image also to the project. Open the Play Game Scene interface file and declare an array to store the images for the memory game. Let's name it as Image Array. Now go to the init method of the Play Game Scene implementation file. Here allocate the array we have declared in the interface file. Initiate it with the names of the animal images that we are going to use in the memory game. This can be done using the init with objects method of NSArray. In this game, we will be using six images. Add the name of those images as the objects for the array. The image names we have in here are bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, and tiger. Next, go to the interface file and declare two location variables, namely x and y. In the implementation file, initialize these location variables with some values. Next, we have to create 12 sprites to mask the images in the scene. We can use multiple for loops to create and position these masked sprites to the position we need. In this case, we will be arranging the sprites in three rows and four columns. So we have to give the limit of the outer for loop as three and the limit of the inner for loop as four. The sprites will be created in the inner for loop. We will be using the frame image we have added to the project as the mask image. Run the application. Press the play menu to go to the play game scene. In the play game scene, we can see that the 12 mask images are placed in exactly the same position as we want them to be. Now we have to select an image from the image array to add beneath the masks. For this, let's declare an integer array named image tag counter with six items. We can use the arc for random percent method to generate random numbers. The parameter added to this method is the maximum limit of the number to be generated, i.e., if we add the parameter as 6, as in this case, it will generate random integer values from 0 to 5, i.e., random values less than the limit value given. Since we want to display the same image twice and only twice, we are using the do while loop to generate the number, i.e., if image tag counter value at the location of the random number generated is equal to 2, then that means that image is added two times. So a new random number is generated in that case. Once random number is generated, we have to use it as tag for the image that we are adding. We can use this number to relate the mask with the image beneath it. In this case, we are going to implement this random number in such a way that the tag of a mask is the random number itself, 
if it's the first among the pair and is 6 greater than the random number otherwise. After this, we have to increment the image tag counter value at position random to make sure that each number is repeated only twice. Next, we have to implement touch handling in our project. For this, first enable touch for this scene by setting the is touch enabled property of the scene to true. Now we have to implement the touch handling methods. As we know, there are mainly three touch handling methods in Cocos 2D. However, in this example, we are only implementing only one of those delicate methods, namely CC touches began with event. Inside this method, write the code to get the touch from the event. Also, write the code to get the touch location in the view of the touch. Next step is to convert the touch location to OpenGL using the ConvertToGL method. Now we have to check whether the user has touched an image or not. For this, we have to check whether the touch location coincides with a rectangle of the image. Let's write a for loop which iterates 12 times to implement this. During each loop, get the sprite image using the tag with value same as that of the loop variable. This can be done using the getChildByTag method. Next, we have to check whether the touch location coincides with the rectangle of the sprite image. This can be done using the cgRectContainsPoint method. The parameters passed to this method are the rectangle of the sprite, obtained using the bounding box property of sprite and the touch point. This method will true if the point is inside the rectangle, i.e., if the touch is inside the image sprite. Inside this, let's write the code to display the tag of the sprite in the console on touching the sprite. Run the application. Go to the Play Game scene by pressing the Play menu. Now touch any of the mask image and see that the tag of the touched image is displayed in the console. Now go to the implementation file. In the section where the touch location is detected inside an image, let's implement the code to display the image associated with that. Here we will be changing the image of the mask sprite to the original image to give the illusion of image hidden beneath the mask as shown. In order to change the image of a sprite object, which is already added to the scene, we use the setTexture method of the sprite object. The parameter passed to this method is the CC Texture Cache instance using the Add Image method. The Add Image method will take the image name as its parameter. We have to convert the tag to the index of the image name in the image array. If the tag is less than 6, then the index is the same as the tag. But if the tag is greater than 8, then we have to subtract 6 from the tag to get the index. The image name in the image array at the index we have calculated using the tag is passed as parameter to the add image method. Run the application and open the gameplay scene by pressing the play menu. Press the mask images one by one and we can see that on pressing, each of the mask image is replaced by the animal image. Go back to the main menu scene and come back once again. Press the mask image and we can see that the order of arrangement is different from that of the previous time. So in this section, we have seen how to add mask images, detect touch on those images and changing the image of the sprite. We have also seen how to load image pairs in a random order every time the scene is run for our Coco's 2D memory game using Xcode.